Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. The topic of this 10 minute moan is an allegation made by Labour, the party who have slammed an SNP candidate who called for civil disobedience if Westminster was to block an Indy Ref too. Yeah, that's right, somebody wanting the Scottish people to take to the streets if they don't get their right that they can't prove to anybody that the majority want another referendum. So, this SNP councillor said she was going to have to read up on what the suffragettes did to help secure another referendum. This story is in the Daily Record by Chris McCall. Right? Labour has slammed an SNP election candidate who suggested Scots could resort to civil disobedience if Westminster continues to ignore calls for a second referendum on independence. That would be fun. Leslie Backhouse, who is standing for the Nationalists in Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath, pointed to protests against the poll tax and tolls on Sky Bridge as examples of alternative routes and the supporters could use. The SNP councillor said she was going to have to read up on what the suffragettes did and find out what's within Westminster rules and regulations. If they're denying democracy, then we have to use every power available to either distrust... Sorry available to us to either distrust or get them to come to the table. Now this is this bit of the myth that how do you what barometer are you using to suggest that they're denying democracy? You're only denying democracy if the majority of people want something. And you've never been able to prove that the majority of people want a referendum. So I don't know where this denying democracy comes along, but it is a nice line that you use, and you use it often. You must talk about it in your wee Tufty Club meetings. Where are we? Uh, yes. In an interview with the National... Oh, the latest episode of my 10-minute moan. Hold on, turn this off. Is a story that's appeared... In an interview with the National, the candidate mentioned civil disobedience is a way of gaining political goals. There you go. The UK government has repeatedly refused to allow India F2 and has insisted the result of the 2014 referendum must be respected. Keir Starmer has also said a future Labour government would refuse any requests for another referendum. The SNP is aiming to win a majority of seats in Scotland as a mandate to begin negotiations over India F2. Sick talk about this. They want to get 29 seats and then tell everybody that's a mandate. Well, they could achieve that with about a third of the vote, right? But don't let that get in the good way of a good SNP bullshit line. Jackie Bailey, Scottish Labour deputy, said this is nothing short of a dangerous tr Trumpian outburst and John Swinney must act now to distance himself and the party from this candidate. Ordinary working Scots will be appalled at this inflammatory statement. Only Scottish Labour is focused on bringing down bills boosting workers' rights and delivering change to Scotland's needs. Uh, I think that might be the end of the story. Yes, it is. So, this crackpot, and yes, she is a crackpot, anybody in a position of power in the public um, sector like that, calling for civil disobedience is obviously not right in the head, right? So, and the fact, <laughs> I find this quite funny as well, the fact that the constituency she's um, a candidate for it's quite a nice guy called um, Neil Hanvey. He is MP since the last election and Neil crossed to Alba um, a couple of years ago and is standing as an Alba um, candidate in the same constituency. So the nationalists and the area have now got two people they can vote for. They can vote for somebody who's actually been down to Westminster, got a fair bit of experience, a proven track record of dealing with things for his constituencies and his constituents and bringing money into the area or a nutcase that thinks we should just be civilly disobedient to get what we want, right? This crackpot, she's a councillor, she's never been to Westminster and that's the choice people have got in uh, Kirkcaldy, right? Beggar's belief, if I was a nationalist and living in Kirkcaldy, I think it's perfectly obvious that Neil Hanvey would probably be Safe to say, the best candidate out of the two of them. So, do what you want. Now, this is just... See if this was any other party, you'd probably get pulled for that. We've had situations before, one down south recently, where 
uh, by-election where Labour, I think it was, pulled their candidate like days before it. They couldn't, it was too late to get them taken out off the ballot because the ballot papers had been printed. But they were like, you're no, you're no Labour anymore. So other parties have done it. And I bet you the SNP don't. There's not a hope in hell because we're past the date of changing your candidate. Even if they were to bin her, she will still show on the ballot paper as with her name and the little SNP logo next to it. So Leslie, it says Leslie Backhouse, SNP, even if they binned her today. So they won't do it. Do you know what I mean? Because the, the, the John Swinney's wanting to get 29 seats, which I'm quite happy to accept he probably won't get, but they ain't going to drop one of their 40, uh, 57 candidates we've got in Scottish elections. SNP ain't going to pull one this late in the day. But you can bet your bottom dollar, if this was a, ref, a reform candidate or a Labour candidate or a Tory candidate in Kirkcaldy, you would hear the SNP demanding that they get removed and how terrible it is and how horrific it is and all this sort of bollocks. But because it's an SNP candidate, they'll do nothing with it. Um, and she just seems like a bit of a lunatic. So if she does get in, at least it'll just be another bad advert for the SNP sitting in Westminster for the next four or five years or however long this parliament lasts. But she certainly, she seems a bit unhinged. And this is, again, down to the quality of people that they're putting up as candidates. They've not got a big skill base to pull from. And if you consider someone being that stupid that they would actually say these words, then it doesn't so give me great hope that of any great intelligence whatsoever. So it's just another highlighted example of how poor the SNP party is just now when that is the calibre of their candidates. And you would think because of what happened with Neil Hanvey, Neil Swarton from SNP to Alba, you would think a normal party would think, better put a sharp cookie into that one because Neil's been there for four, five, four and a half years, I think he served in Parliament, and he might, uh, he might, you know, he might win again. So let's put a right top-notch uh, candidate in there, and they end up with this crackpot, right? <laughs> That's calling for civil disobedience if we don't get what we want without a way of proving that it is the majority. I don't even think there's been a poll that suggested 50-plus percent of the Scottish electorate want independence. But you are using these words again, like, and I'm calling it right now. The uh, They won't win 29 seats, but if they did, they're going to go down to Westminster and demand a referendum based on, look, we've got the mandate for that from that election, at which point Keir Starmer would quite rightly say, you get 32.5% of the vote, are we back up the road? You're dafty, right? But they're going to demand this. But what I also find a bit peculiar is, if you put a line in the sand and you see if we go over that line, that's a mandate for independence. But you're not prepared to accept if you don't go over that line, that's a mandate for shutting the fuck up, right? Because that's the reality of it. The SNP don't want that. They want to have two, both sides in a coin toss, right? Where Swinney's already been asked, if you don't get to the 29 seats, does that give you a mandate to stop talking about independence? But no, he wouldn't accept that. So what is it you actually want? You, you, you want every single card in the pack of playing cards. You want heads and tails and we toss a coin. And that's not the way the world works. But these disillusioned bampots can't they actually get that into their heads. That That's not the way the world works. You, you can't have both sides of a coin toss. But try telling one of the cult members that that's not how society works. It's certainly not how democracy works. Stand and stamp in your feet and saying we demand when you can't prove that what you're you know what you're backing, but you can't back up what you're trying to say, and that is that the Scottish people demand a referendum. When you can't have that in any measured format, then you're talking absolute bollocks. So this is just a thing highlighted a few things that the SNP do. That is claim stupid things and say stupid things, and this woman has been able to pull the two of them off in the same interview because she claims Westminster are standing away the democratic right of the Scottish people 
And if we don't get our way, we should just have some civil disobedience. That's a horrible thought. That That's just potty, right? And that would not be a happy place to be because you would get a reaction to that. And you would get a reaction to that through counter civil disobedience. So anybody that's in any position of power, and this woman just now is a councillor and she's hoping to be an MP, stupid enough to suggest that the public have civil disobedience when they can't get their way is one of the most moronic things I've heard in this whole decrepit election campaign. If you liked the video, get a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please hit subscribe. And most importantly of all, unless you're John Swinney, the SNP, or this crackpot, Leslie Backhouse. See everybody else. Have a great day. Cheerio bye now.